This morning, I want to cover five things that I wish I had known when I first started running. Like socks, really? But there's actually a really big difference between regular socks and athletic socks. I didn't think it would be worth the investment, but so glad I finally did. Athletic socks are made out of different material than regular socks. These are regular socks. These are athletic socks. If you notice here in the toe, there is some extra netting, and here is just the regular line. This allows your toes to breathe a little bit more. There's also, you can't see it in this, unfortunately, but there's actually a band that tightens up a little bit more here. It's a little bit tighter here in the middle versus here it's the same all the way down. These are also shorter, so they're not so tall and causing you to sweat more around your ankle. So a little bit of extra padding here in the heel. It's a little bit thicker than the rest of the sock to help aid cushioning the heel. The second thing I wish I had known when I first started running was about shoes. Running shoes are really important. So I could talk about running shoes for a while, but I'll keep it pretty brief. Everybody runs a little bit different. I pronate when I run, meaning my foot doesn't land perfectly in the middle and rock back. I land to the outside and compensate and come in. It's just the natural way I run, so there are certain types of shoes that I should purchase over other types of shoes. This toe box is extremely important. I want your foot to be able to move a little bit, your toes. I have really wide feet, so I have to buy certain brands of shoes. Like, I can't wear sock any. They don't make them wide enough. But Brooks, New Balance, they make them wide enough for me. There's also a lot of technology that goes into making running shoes. It's nice breathable material up here. My feet from getting insanely hot. The third thing I wish I had known when I first started running was how to tie my shoes. I know, it's not really typical to not know how to tie your shoes at 30 years old, but there is a special way to tie running shoes or athletic shoes in general that I didn't know. So typically, when you have your shoes, they're tied like this. See, just coming out. With athletic or running shoes, you wanna take your lace. See this extra hole? You're gonna go back through that hole and leave a little hanging out. This is the other side. Now you've got these two floppy things here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your lace and you're gonna cross it over like that. And then you have this extra little loop here. This extra loop helps to tighten down around your ankle a little bit more so that your shoes don't slide so much this way on your foot. It gives you movement here still so that your toes can breathe, but it also helps to give your ankle stability. I knew when I had first started running was how to run. Form matters. There's three different types of running. There's jogging, there's running, and there's sprinting. Jogging is moving at a slower pace, shorter stride, a little bit faster than a power walk. Running is taking a longer stride and lifting your foot up higher so that your shin is at a parallel to the ground. Sprinting is an even longer stride, pushing harder and leaning even more farther forward and even getting your shin past parallel so that your knee is at a smaller than 90 degree angle with the ground. I've been sticking with jogging instead of running so much here lately. 
because I'm filming as I run. The fifth thing I learned while running, this one I really wish I could go back and tell myself. It's okay to struggle. It's hard. It's not as easy as you remember it is. There's a lot of work that goes into it. It's okay to be sore. It's okay to walk. You're just starting out just like with any other form of fitness. It takes time. I encourage you to get out and run, to keep going through the uncomfortable soreness, discomfort, and lack of oxygen that is running. Oh, yeah.